Well-behaved women seldom make history. Well-behaved what? Women seldom make history. Does that mean women should always behave? No, it means history is full of heroes who did the right thing, stood up for justice, saved lives, who never made it into the history books. Like how there's never a story on news that said, today Jane Smith brushed her teeth and ate her vegetables. That's right. Doing the right thing doesn't always get attention. Not always, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't bother doing the right thing. It just means you might not get credit for it if you do. Or it might take a century or two. Like how it did for my great aunt, Sybil Luddington. Yeah. 
assistant in the field. Is there anything else we need, sir? Thank you, Ludington. Do you not have a grist mill at your farm in Fredericksburg? We need the only mill in New York built by women. <laughs> I need you there, Ludington. Our Continental Army needs bread. A grist mill is where we grind up wheat and corn to make flour. Without flour, you don't have bread. We also need a content officer to lead on militia in your area. Sir? I promoted you to colonel, sir. I want you to harass and undermine those British troops in every way you can. I know they're only farmers. We can turn them into soldiers. Thank you, sir. I will. Well, Washington and his men did exactly what Washington asked. General William Howe was furious at Ludington's success. William Tr General Tryon had the unpleasant task of reporting about it. Where are those supplies, man? We do not have them, sir. Why the devil not? It's the Ludington, sir. Their militia are sneaky. They shoot at us from behind trees. They hide behind rocks and bushes. They sneak in at night and steal all our bacon. Then why don't they stand and fight like proper soldiers? Have they no pride? I do not know, sir. Tryon, I've had enough of this Ludington. I'm the general of the most disciplined army there's ever been, and I will not be defeated by a bunch of pig farming jackanapes and sherberries. 300 guineas for this Ludington. 300 guineas, sir? 300 dead or alive. 300 guineas at that time would be worth $48,000 today. 61 high definition televisions. 87 iPhones. 160 Xbox Ones. 41st class plane tickets to the South Pacific. 48,000 fidget spinners. Or one semester of undergrad at Harvard. I teach there. I believe it's actually closer to 43,000 with room and board. Well. Any way you look at it, I was worth a lot of money. You're worth a million to me, Daddy. Thank you, sweetheart. But we get ahead of ourselves. The Ludingsons didn't know yet about the bounty on Henry's head. Dr. Ichabod Crossum, some Tory associates. I'm a baby. And Epiclet Sound and Exclash. We're talking to his new friend, Enoch Crosby, all about it. Did you say 300 guineas? 300 guineas, my lad. Nothing to sneeze at. And we'd be doing our duty as Englishmen. God save the king. Indeed, Ludington should be ashamed of himself, taking up arms against his own king he swore to protect only four years ago. He's a traitor. Exactly so. I'm a Tory and a proud one, too. Oh, me too, me too. This man was no Tory. What Dr. Prosser didn't know was that he was talking to a spy. 
Enoch Crosby worked for John Jay, who in addition to his duties as president of the Continental Congress in writing the New York State's Constitution, led a ring of spies. This was all before he became Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. I was kind of a big deal. Crosby, I need you to infiltrate another group of Tories. We need to know who these people are and arrest them. As always, I'm happy to serve my country. Dangerous though it may be, it is more exciting than making shoes. You're good at it, sir. Making shoes? Spying. Thank you. I do worry my reputation is trying to perceive me. One more, Crosby. Then we'll find you other employment. It will be the usual plan. Befriend some Tories, gain their trust, then send us a secret message about where they will be gathering. We'll arrest them all, including you. Then you can escape, and they will know you were in on it. Where am I headed? Fredericksburg. Excellent. I know a good patriot there. Colonel Lennington? The same. Are you acquainted with his daughter, Sybil? I do not believe I have had the pleasure. She's a bright girl, quick-witted, responsible, takes after her father. I say, she may be useful to you in intelligence work. Very well. What is your plan, Dr. Prosser? How will we capture the traitor Lennington? I have a gang of skinners. We plan to steal up to his house tonight and take him unawares. Will you join us? There's five guineas in it for you. Five out of 300? It's my plan. I deserve a larger share. <laughs> of course. Dr. Prosser, are you here? Maybe he's out. Dr. Prosser? In here, girls. Enoch knew he had to warn Sybil about the threat against her father. But he could not do it in front of Prosser. Prosser would know Enoch was a loyal spy. Fortunately, they had a system worked out for just such an occasion.
doctor. We think he may have the mumps. Could you come by the house and check on him? Indeed. I was heading in the direction of the Luddington farm anyway, so a house call will fit perfectly into my schedule. Goodness, man, are you well? It's a tremor. Nervous sick, I suppose. I think I'll just go lie down. What was that all about? Either our family are in grave danger, or the British Army is selling guinea pigs. <laughs> what? I'm pretty sure what Mr. Crosby was trying to tell me was that General Howe was, has put a price on Daddy's head. 300 guineas. Good thing Daddy's not home. They might try to attack the house anyway. We must be ready. At that time, there were gangs who would rob and steal anyone and say they were doing it in the name of the king. One such group were called Skinners since they technically worked for the General Cortland Skinner. Sybil was nervous. Sybil, will you please sit down? You're making me jumpy too. I'm sorry, Mother. I cannot be still. I am certain the house will be attacked, but I do not know when. Ruff, 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 ruff. What is it? What is it, girl? Is someone out there? Ruff, 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 ruff. There are men out there. How can you be sure? I can see the moonlight on their bayonets. I have an idea. Mother, gather the family in here. Why should Sybil get to make the orders? I'm the old spy. I should be making the orders. Shut your bone box, Archie. Sybil's seven years older than you, and she's been assisting father for years. What do you think we should do, brother? I, I don't know what whatever Sybil says. <laughs> We're not going to fight them, are we? No, Becky. I have a better idea. Still, 
they don't yield. Archie, take this broomstick. Mary, take this mop. Mother, take this fire. Iron, Sophie, take this fire. children? No, it does not. Ludington probably heard about the bounty and put a guard on watch. There must be 50 soldiers in there. What do you reckon? We beat a hasty retreat. <gasps> Quietly hasty. Do that. 
the North General Sailman predicted there that sand nation was reading and so he sallied for syllab it was a gas when the red coats went past red and concerned trespass on lovely Danbury. Everyone in the town pretty would burn it down in the name of the crown. They were right for wary. Take your horse, ride for the men, and 
tell them to be at this house by daybreak. I love you, Daddy. Go. Be safe. that I had done my duty. Attention! Sybil? Sybil, you're home! Mother, she's home! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Ludington. 
Washington's militia for the Joint Enforcement Forces of General Silliman and General Benedict Arnold. Yes, that, Benedict Arnold. General Arnold was actually one of the great heroes of the Revolutionary War until he defected to the British side. Under the command of General Wester, they chased the British back to the sea from whence they came. George Washington himself came to the Lettington Farm. Here comes the general. The general? The general. Colonel Lettington, my friend Alexander Hamilton has written this about your successful mission. I congratulate you on the Danbury Expedition. The stores destroyed there have been purchased at a high price to the enemy. The spirit of the people on high occasion does him great honor. Is a pleasing proof with that they have lost nothing of the permissive zeal with which they have began the contest. Sybil, the nation thanks you. I thank you. Time passed and Sybil's story was largely forgotten, but she went on to have a successful but ordinary life. And now these children have performed a musical about me. Ah. Uh... 